You're now listening to the Zod and Drea podcast. Body for All right, another episode. You're right, you're right. We're back. This is episode number 97 of the Zod Andrea podcast, and we are here with my man Chris. Chris. All right, you don't know Chris. Chris is my cousin. Uh, he's going to be on the mic soon enough. Yo, what up, man? What up? What's going on? What's going on? All right, all right. Uh, you'll be able to check him out. Uh, we'll make sure that we uh, put his uh, Twitch account on there so you can check him out, and uh, he'll give a little rundown of uh, what we did this weekend. I mean, how was your weekend, first of all? How was your week? You asking me? Yeah, I'm asking um, like you. we have a guest here, so I don't know no, if you're gonna no, we'll guess him. We'll talk about him in a sec. Oh, my my weekend was still busy as could be, holding things down here while you guys were dealing with every type of weather trauma possible, getting back here to Phoenix. Yeah, pretty much. I'm gonna talk about it soon in the relationship segment, but uh, I was out. I was out and about. Um, Wound up in New Jersey and somehow wound up in Arizona and <laughs> somehow you know through rain, sleet, snow. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that because um, you know just talk about what you see in America when you're on the road for like six days and um, it's kind of a, an eye opening experience and it's something that I've done before but it's always good to you know revisit. So um, that's what we've been doing. Uh, Chris will jump on that one uh, with us, but um. Second, you want to talk about the entertainment part of what we're going to be yeah, discussing? Yeah, so we saw a really interesting movie that was suggested by my friend Lainey. So shout out to Lainey. Lainey. And, and this movie was called uh, Professor Marston and the Wonder Women. All right, you got it right. That's it. And it came out in, I believe, 27. No, no, no. Yeah, 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a really good movie. Uh, we'll discuss a little bit about that and what it was about. And it's funny because when I used to see the the movie poster, I was like, oh, what the hell is this? Movie? Right, because it came out a little after the Wonder Woman movie came yeah, out. Yeah, very close to mm-hmm. it. Um, and, you know, I wasn't sure what it was or what its connection was. But once we wound up, you know, seeing it and figuring it out, it was really good. And uh, shout out to Sherry because uh, we revisited that again <laughs> last night about uh, what we're going to talk about, which is connected to the movie. But lastly, let's talk about... The final topic, which is our main subject, which is the impact of the Black Panther effect. Uh, I don't know if that's a thing, but it is now. The Black Mm -hmm. Panther effect. Uh, Anybody who has been on their social media, you would pretty much know exactly what I'm talking about. But we're going to have a little fun and just talk about that. But in the meantime, you know what? Let's um, let's talk about the road trip that we went on. So Chris is going to have to get on the mic. I mean, Drea, you know, Drea, jump on, you know, when you have to jump on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that you know if you want to ask any questions, but just share the mic with Chris. But um, let's talk about this. So, all right, so here's the whole story. Um, last weekend, I think it was on a Friday, I had to fly out to uh, New Jersey, go back home because uh, mom had bought a new truck and or new SUV, and she wanted to go and bring it back. So she had my um, cousin, her nephew, come up and uh, from Virginia to help me with this travel. So the travel was going to be to take all the items from one house, shove it into the truck, and then just pretty much ship all of it back to uh, the Phoenix area. And we're talking like 2,300. If we went direct, it would be 2,300 miles and like 36 hours, something like that. But we didn't do any 36 hours because there were people to see and driving that straight would have been ridiculous. So we just went and saw the United States um, in certain areas. Uh, I mean, I'll let Chris jump in because I've done it before. But this was his first time, I believe, right outside of the East Coast and hitting. You didn't just hit. Yeah, you hit the Midwest. Then you hit the Bible Belt. And then you hit the Southwest. I mean, you didn't quite make it to California. You're literally only five hours away in the drive. But you made it close. What do you think about this whole trip? Man, the trip was insane. Um, we straight up went. Like you said, between weather, between how the places look cities small towns highways anything and everything in between i mean i feel like i know america a lot better now you do know america a lot better because we got i mean first first of all like what was that patties or something you know we made a nice little stop just like Mm -hmm. left off the highway it's like you know let's just check out this little spot and the food was dope the people were real friendly and it was just (laughs) i mean 
that's something that, that I've learned. America, food, the small little spots off the side of the highway are the best. Do not stop at like in the middle of a town. Just if you're driving around the highway, see a big billboard. Yeah. Hey, yo, three miles up the road, hop off. That's and it. And then oh, Patty's was so and good. I think that's what it was, right? Yeah, it was oh. good. And it was so, what do we have? We had like, like oh, it was a chicken and waffles. And waffles. But it was a chicken waffle sandwich. The waffle was the bread. like, And then you <laughs> put the, the honey and, and the syrup on it. It's like, what are you talking about? Yes, we'll eat that. So uh, we also, um, one of the things that I was wanting to do was go to the Ozarks. I don't know why. I never thought I'd survive. You know, there was literally a town. I think we were in Arkansas, right? Yeah. A, a town yep. called Ozark. There was no way I wasn't getting off of there. So we get off the exit. We travel down like three miles. First thing we see is a Confederate flag on the, <laughs> on the house. It's like, oh, yeah. different. Yo, we're no. not in Kansas, boy. And we hit this spot. What was it? It was this some sort of little barbecue spot, but... We were like we don't we didn't know what to expect in there, right? It's like a couple just, brothers. Exactly. You just <laughs> hop off. You see, you drive into town, the Confederate flag, you the good old boys, and uh we pull up, hop out, head in. Yo, the food was dope. Cute little waitress too. I, look. Uh, <laughs> hit me up. Uh, but... <laughs> a waitress was real cute. And uh, you know, the people were real friendly and everyone was just talking, but you know, we were admiring some of the little wall decorations. It's funny, it's one of those, yo Sal, why ain't any brothers on the wall? Except the fact that there were brothers on the wall because it looked like they had jazz festivals like every who knows when. King Biscuit, yo. King King Sh- Yo, shout, sh- out. shout out to King Biscuit. Shout out to King Biscuit. <laughs> yo, I sent that to my sister and she couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> but yeah, we just went and we checked it out. There was not just one gigantic cross that we saw, which was over in Illinois, and I think it was uh, Highway 57. But once we crossed over into, what was it? A groom. Groom, yep. Groom, Texas, I think. Yes. It was. Groom, Texas. Another one. Another gigantic cross. And we are talking in the middle of all of this, from Oklahoma on. What, what kind of weather did we hit? Um, so, if you think about precipitation, right? Rain. We hit the rain. Yeah. And then... We hit the fog at one point. We hit the ice, the sleet, the snow, and probably a bunch of other stuff. At a certain point, we just couldn't see anymore. We just couldn't see anymore, and it was it wasn't that it was it was crazy because we kept going. Mom said stop. We kept going. We kept pushing through. We were like, yo, we're home free. Went to Albuquerque. Shout out to Kerry Plumbo. It was great seeing you there. And we went home. We're like, we're just gonna hit Flagstaff. Boom, snow. I mean, we, it, like we were that close. We were back in Arizona, and we still. But we got, we we got there. We got there. We got to see America. And unfortunately, Chris has to go home tomorrow. But I'm sure he'll be back to do it again. Oh, I definitely will be back. But before we get too far off, I do want to mention hey. what, Ozarks. What they have on the menu? Oh, you talking about that uh, possum? Uh, what was it? Possum with pork rolls and and that like coon coon fat. <laughs> You know anyway, you're in the South. Anyway, you know in the South. But yeah, yeah. If you want, please check us out because um, uh, you'll be able to see uh, through the website and also on the Facebook page, you'll be actually be able to travel with us because um, I have all of our days documented and we'll be able to see that. So enjoy it. Thanks, Chris, for doing the whole travel with me and thanks for uh, documenting with me. No problem. All right, all right. And just in case, Twitch, it's your, you, why spell it? Y-O-R-U-S-T-R-I-X. All right, all right. Whatever that is. But you can check that out on Twitch, and we'll have it written. Babe, take the mic back. All right, you ready to talk about this movie? Yeah, let's talk about this movie. All right, all I right. I liked hearing your stories, though. No doubt. You guys have an adventures. We have plenty of adventures. <laughs> uh, make sure you see the Zydendrea, um one from last year, too. That was that was a good one. It's on oh, the yeah. same YouTube channel. So we checked out Professor Marston and the Wonder Women, uh, which was a movie that came out last year, I guess almost in conjunction with Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. It came out like um, a few weeks afterwards. Yeah, the timing was perfect with it. And we weren't sure what it was, and I bet a lot of people did, but it um, really touched on some really cool subjects. Uh, I'll let you go in more so the technical aspects of it. So what the movie introduces us to is Professor, at the time, Professor Marston. Mm-hmm. And it was in the early 20s, and this was uh, Harvard? Well, he, he was, he had, yeah. It was I mean, one of the colleges from Harvard yeah. that he was, uh, uh, he was uh, one of the professors in psychology. And what he was studying was uh, personality and behavior patterns. And what he then helped then to create when it came to uh, almost describing somebody's behavior was called DISC. 
So for all you personality nerds out there, that's now known as the DISC assessment. So he was one of the founders. I wouldn't say adventure, right? It's more founders of the theory. He was. It's D-I-S-C, in case you're wondering. And also, even basing that off of that, mm -hmm. he and his wife had been putting together something that pretty much came out of it, which was the lie detector test. And it was the version of the lie detector test where they actually uh, developed the straps around the chest, and that's when they knew that your heart and your body can't lie. So you may say a lie, but your body's going to always, what was the word that they used? Um, it's going to... It's going to deceive you. I mean, your body's going to wind up deceiving you. So, mm -hmm. like, your body's betray always going to... Yeah, betray you. Your yeah, body betray will you. tell you the truth. So, you may say something out of your mind, but your body, your heart's going to raise. It's, it's, it's not going to lie to you. Um, and, I mean, I think it was one of the early... I, I think they actually did that. I mean, their version, if it was not the version, was of the lie detector. I mean, I think mm -hmm. they may have actually created it, but um, he also helped form the disc. But what was really amazing about him is that uh, his test subject on this was a student named um, Olive. 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 I'm sorry, it was Olive. And Olive and his wife, you know, the wife wanted to make sure you didn't get close to my husband, but they wound up in a polyamorous relationship together, um, having kids and everything else. But the biggest thing about Professor Marston is what? Is that he created the Wonder Woman comic series. Yeah, so this guy who made... The, yeah, yeah, it's like crazy. <laughs> you know, this guy who wound up making, you know, the disc assessment and making up, you know, the lie detector test with his wife and being in his polyamorous relationship also is the creator of Wonder Woman. Um, they don't, you know, they I think they took some liberties, like they said, in the mm -hmm. movie, but the fact is it was really well done on the way that they did it. They talked about his life. They touched on certain subjects. Even though they say it's a fully true story, you're just never sure. Um, according to his granddaughter... Um, they took a lot of liberties and made up a lot of things. Um, they, she doesn't believe that they were in a polyamory relationship, but who knows? But um, all them kids are proof of something. I know there's a lot of kids. <laughs> there are a lot of kids. A lot of kids, but uh, he definitely did create Wonder Woman. And um, I loved the one thing I really loved was all the bondage and everything. <laughs> like, they, like the early comics of Wonder Woman, man, they had her doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Sexual bondage, all kinds of things. Um, and then apparently they stripped their powers up until the 70s. Because of some of the uh, parent groups, some of the federal government uh, parent groups, like the Tipper Gore at the time, yeah, I forget her name. Like the PMRC, the Tipper <laughs> Gores, yeah. And so this woman was like, no, you guys, what you're creating is pornographic, it's horrible for children. So there were like comic burnings, and people yeah, were burning yeah. their Wonder Woman comics. And like you said, man, I bet they are kicking themselves in their asses How do you right feel now. Like it, dumbasses. <laughs> yeah. Destroying like 1930s Wonder Woman, yeah. But then she wound up outselling Superman and everything. Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Zod. And I'm Drea. And we want you to check out the Zod and Drea podcast every Tuesday. Where can everybody find us at? Hmm. You can always check us out on www.zodandrea.com. Where else? You can always check us out also on Facebook at Zod Andrea. Instagram? Zod Andrea. Snapchat. Zod and Drea. YouTube. Zod and Drea. I see a pattern. I see a pattern. <laughs> so if you haven't caught that, catch us at Zod Andrea on all the social networks. But also make sure you subscribe to the Zod Andrea podcast where? At zodandrea.com. And also on YouTube and iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher and iHeartRadio, we're coming for you. Let us know what you think, and if you want to be a guest, reach out to us. And put all of your input into whatever our topics are for the week. So we hope to check you out and see you there. Bye. All right, all right. All right now let's talk about our main subject. What is it? All right, so our main topic is the impact of the Black Panther effect. Um, in case you haven't seen, um, one of the biggest movies this year already, although it's only February, is Marvel's release of The Black Panther. So um, it's uh, a movie starring Chadwick Boseman and a bunch of other black people. Um, <laughs> like Michael B. Jordan and uh, Lupita Nyong'o. Angela and Bassett. Angela ba like, if, if you're black, Forrest Whitaker, if you're black and you're in this movie, you know, straight up, I feel bad some of the black actors that didn't make it because... Samuel L. Jackson's not <laughs> Yeah, like Samuel, he's like, Nick Fury could have been in there. You oh, know. but he probably will be. He probably will be. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be, a, he'll be a Jedi. You know, he'll be a Jedi in the next one. He'll come back. But, um, like, it was a, an amazing movie. And it, 
the thing about it, it wasn't just an amazing movie, and, and this is where the Black Panther effect, I think, comes into play, is the fact that it was an amazing experience. Um, people were either Team T'Challa or they were Team Killmonger, depending on how you saw the world. Mm -hmm. And what was so amazing also about it that got people really excited about this is this is one of the first movies. Now, this, when I say experience, this is one of the first movies that comes out that features black people in a positive way. It's not just a positive way, but it's also a future of what Africa probably could have been. Sure, it could have been if a meteorite actually you know, slammed to the earth, but it could have been with the technological advances if colonialism didn't exist, you know, if white people didn't get in the way of black people all the time, if they didn't go mining for all their diamonds and all their jewels and gems that Africa is uh, known to be so rich for, that there would be so many more um, offered gifts from this land. Uh, you get to see it if you, um, I have a friend who's from Kenya mm -hmm. here um, uh, who has told me all about Nairobi. And just how advanced Nairobi is. And just it's just this beautiful city and how people are just excited to go there. And some, some other places that are on the, um, the west coast of Africa, the Gold Coast, and um, some of these places that are just really advanced. And it's kind of what Wakanda, which is the fictional uh, city on um, Black Panther, which kind of represents. It's, it represents this positive thing. So this isn't a movie like Selma or The Butler or, you know, um, 12 Years a Slave. Or Hidden or, Figures. Not so much Hidden Figures, because Hidden Figures was even a positive one about women, but it didn't go back in the past about, but I guess even like a Hidden Figures where, mm -hmm. where you know, somebody's being oppressed. But Hidden Figures was more like these women were the heroes. They were the Wonder Women of. True. Um, whereas it's like, okay, yeah, he's a butler and he's gone through this and, you know, he's seen all this stuff going through, but he's still a butler. Mm. And, you know, he, it was good movie. 12 Years a Slave, excellent movie. I mean, Lupita, you know, she got her Oscar for that movie. Um, but it's that, oh, you got to go in the past to find, you know, heroic black people who had to suffer at the hands of white people um, and discrimination. Whereas this, where the Wakanda effect, or I should say the Black Panther effect, is more like the pride that's in what could have been and you know, whether you think like Killmonger or T'Challa, it's still all black going towards a positive setting for black people. Something that's better than what you have now. So it's either the kingdom that we left that we could have had, but due to colonialism and everything else has been destroyed, or, you know, Killmonger's way of trying to take back what is claimed ours because our cousins don't recognize us for who we are anymore. Uh -huh. Um but it wound up with people showing up dressed as either Wakanda gear or Zamunda gear. I mean, people were coming in from, you know, coming, coming to America gear. They were like, <laughs> black is black. They didn't care. Uh -huh. And I thought that was really dope. It was, it, it was a pride. I mean, you saw some of the videos of the kids who were able to go. It, I think uh, his Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman had um, forwarded on his Twitter, and it went nuts. All right. these kids that were just dancing. You saw them on the desk. Um, uh -huh. I, would, I even saw just a video the other day of in Brazil and how everyone dressed to go in their in beautiful clothing to go see Black Panther in a white uh, theater, in a white store. So only the, uh, the white people or the people that had a lot of money would go shopping in the small. Mm -hmm. And it was known that if you were black or you were dark, you just couldn't go there. And they were like, screw that. We have pride. And we are so happy to see this movie. And they dressed from head to toe in beautiful clothing yeah. and just bombarded this and you, shopping area. And this is what's so dope about it because you know what set it off. I bet money what set it off was um, the fact that they had their premiere. Mm. Remember their premiere? They actually dressed. They told them to dress like, like you know, king, like in kingdom gear. Like, the, you know, they royalty. were sitting there. Mm -hmm. It was all royalty. And. And I think that pe once people saw some of those photos, they were, I mean, I know Chris and I, we were rolling and we were pulling them up. And I was like, yeah, Yo, you, you know my girl, Janelle Monet. Angela Bassett, did you see what she wore too? I didn't even see Angela because I, Angela, it, she can wear a burlap. <laughs> I don't care, <laughs> yeah. you know. But Janelle Monet was looking good in her little blue, mm -hmm. whatever. And everybody just looked good. You know, Chadwick had his cool little shirt and, his, and Luke Cage showed up with the daishiki and you know, it was it was the Black Panther effect. It it showed so much pride to where it grossed over seven hundred. I mean, seven hundred million dollars in a couple of weekends right. is ridiculous. It's right. ridiculous. And this is a there were what maybe two white characters, really main characters. You know, in the movie, like mm -hmm. like two of them. And 
to have that, it, it's almost the reverse of most movies made in Hollywood, which will have, you know, two, you know, black characters, you know, an all white cast. And, you know, to them, that's absolutely, and this is where white supremacy comes in and also uh, white privilege, where they don't notice. They don't notice that difference. They don't notice it, but damn sure they notice this difference because the first thing, that first thing, Black Panther's coming out with the movie. Oh my God, black people are excited. Well, damn, you know, uh, we're going to have to get our friends together on Facebook and we're going to have to make sure that they get, uh, you know, bad reviews, you know, on, on, on whatever the tomato, rotten tomatoes and, and all the, like just hating number one. And then number two, oh, you know what? Didn't black Panther, how come there's not a white Panther? Like they were really posting this. Why is there not a white Panther movie? You know, the KKK, Mm. it's like, first of all, this is not about the black Panther party. Number two. You obviously don't know anything about the Black Panther Party because they were nothing like the KKK. You know, they killed nobody. Mm-mm. So They, they created only... health care programs and education programs. Yes, and food programs. Mm-hmm. And they uh, followed the police to make sure that they ensured that they did the right thing and they enforced their own gun laws. So actually, they were um, also heroes like T'Challa. So mm-hmm. screw you. So these are, this is the ignorance, and this is also the Black Panther effect, the fact that you got so many negative things coming out of it from people. And you saw on Twitter, too, there were some uh, white supremacist groups that were posting of women getting supposedly attacked oh, geez. and beat up at the theater. And this one dumbass person posted a picture of a woman with the black guy. And it turns out it was the same image of that ex-wife from uh, from the White House. Yeah, yeah. That, was that, it that, Porter or whatever name? Porter's or, or, ex-wife. Or like that. Yeah, it was her picture that he posted saying this woman was beat at a theater trying to watch Black Panther. Which is a Black Panther effect. It becomes into the negative so you know you get these people who are so deeply just drenched in white white privilege that they don't understand what it's like to be that minority they don't know what it's like to be that misrepresent represented or where you can only have certain movies that are really um explosive or get to the academy awards because you played a slave or you know i mean then again they didn't say anything about uh the nat turner movie um (laughs) That my man, because a dude uh, who was accused of rape, you remember? The actor? Yeah, uh-huh. uh, Nate, uh, Nate Parker. Mm-hmm. Nate Parker's movie, even though he did and he was acquitted, mm-hmm. but, you know, they wound up um, not really pushing that movie. So they have an agenda. Hollywood has an agenda on certain things that they're going to push because it was an excellent movie. Number one, I love Nat Turner. I mean, sorry that he killed, you know, he and his boys killed 60 white people, but... You but know, you'd with, be mad too. You would be mad if you were a slave and you know you just wanted freedom. So you know, don't get really mad when somebody wants to break free and he kills everybody in his way. Um, that's what the police do nowadays to black people. So you know, you can imagine if you were a slave. But you know, they didn't really push that movie. The Black Panther effect being um, this time around, where there is a pride, even though it's mystical, it's um, imagination from really a white guy, um, but it's something that's representative of people who only are deemed negative and shown as rioters every time they get upset about something. Um, Mm -hmm. The fact that you can't have anyone say Black Lives Matter without someone assuming there's the word only before it or the word to after it, Um, and then try and come in with All Lives Matter. It's like the, the, the Black Panther movie is that important to society because it shows where the power actually lays in people and what interest has. To the point where the Black, Black uh, Panther effect, because remember, he came out in, um, in uh, Civil War. So if he comes out in Civil War, and they talk, remember, they talked about him in Age of Ultron, uh-huh. because uh, at least that's where the connection like, came from. For, 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 um, for, for uh, I keep wanting to say vibranium. It is vibranium. Um, for the vibranium. And then, you know, you go into the next movie, then he actually shows up. People went nuts, man. When the commercial came out, people were, like, about to throw their TVs out of the window because they were going crazy for Black Panther. So the buildup was there. And then when they came out with a whole movie about this, and it wasn't even really a MCU-tied movie. It was literally just the origin and only Wakanda. The only connection is, and I'm not going to say anything in case anyone sees it in the spoilers, is the very end. Right. That's when you only see it. That's really the only way you see it. What do you think this impact has on kids? That's just it. When I saw those little kids dancing, Mm -hmm. like this changes their perception of a whole bunch of things. I think that maybe even some of them didn't even realize why they were so excited, but they knew that they saw other people excited. Because, I mean, maybe they did because they were so big into the MCU 
But these kids look like they were like six. I'm like, all right, you know, you weren't even alive when Iron Man came out, you know. But, you know, they were excited for a reason. And sometimes that's all you need is that energy around other people to be like, what is it? Oh, it's Black Panther. What's it about? I don't know, but he's black and he's kicking ass. Yeah, let me dance because I'm going to see a movie about a black guy that's kicking I think that has a long um, effect on people. I I want these kids to realize because, um, like, I've seen some memes where it's like, okay, in five years you're going to have, you know, kids in kindergarten named Wakandia and Wakandre <laughs> and all that, you know. Um, and I understand that pride, but don't go like, all right, people, all right, brothers, just slow your roll with that. But you know, they have to also understand their Black history. How old were you when you started reading comic books and you came across the first Black comic? Uh lead or um book. it was uh the first black comic i was little i was little man i had to be like kindergarten first grade set because neil my my brother neil has this i think he at that time he he was in the newspaper i remember he was in the newspaper for how many comics he had mm-hmm. and apparently my dad like threw away like like ten thousand of them or something but then he gained like another thirty thousand so i mean who knows what my dad threw out um, but Neil has a collection. My first one that I ran up was Luke Cage. And back then he was Power Man. So all I said, it was Power Man and, um, Cyborg. Those two comics when I was a kid, man, I'm going to tell you, like I, I, and it's funny you say that because I don't think about it. I didn't think about it then, but I think about it now. It's like they were black characters that I just Mm-hmm. Like so, it was weird. It was like I, now that I think it, but those were my character. Even though when I was little, it was Vision. Mm-hmm. When I was little, I loved to draw Vision. Vision was my favorite. I would take my crayons in kindergarten and draw Vision. But later on, it was like uh, Luke Cage and um, especially Cyborg. Like I remember, I still see him screaming when he found out he was Cyborg. Like that drawing just like haunted me. It haunted me for a long time. So can you imagine then? That character now brought yeah. to life in front of you on the big screen Ex- and what exactly. that impact would have done to you. But it did. Because remember, I was a kid when I saw Luke Cage. When I saw that Luke Cage was going to be turned into a Marvel series on, on Netflix. You were that you, age again. You remember. Mm-hmm. I was that kid. Because you remember that when he busted out of prison and he had that thing on his head and the big yellow shirt. <laughs> I look like a damn fool. Like <laughs> that part paid homage to the cartoon. And I was dying. From that part, but that, like, I don't, and I remember I said, I don't know what's blacker, Luke Cage, the TV show, or uh, Black Panther. I don't know what's blacker. Mm. Like, I seriously don't know what, what a blacker show is, but, you know, that effect, that, um, it, it sticks with you, and I think you're right, it'll stick with the kid, but also, let's go further than that effect. Mm-hmm. The Black Panther effect, what does it bring out? People start noticing things, especially DC. DC knows, and they've had, um... Wait, you mean comic, or... Comic, okay. DC Comics, because they've had enough time... To prepare for this, because like I said, Age of Ultron, and then they saw the the power that uh, Civil War had when he came out, um, that they wound up creating a whole TV show, Black Lightning. Uh-huh. Like you cannot tell me that Black Lightning just came out of nowhere. I will bet money that Black Lightning is a direct result of the Black Panther. Which effect. I like the show too. The show uh-huh. is. Dope! If you haven't seen Black Lightning, then please see Black Lightning. Well, we got about 40 dope. seconds left. You want to talk about one of the major impacts that we've seen so far, too? Go ahead. You do that. When it comes to voter registration, could match the blockbuster performance of Black Panther? What they've seen is with uh, various grassroots groups during the uh, uh, movie, when it was launched, they had voter registration booths. And what kind of impact is that going to be then for the next round of next uh, seats coming up? Well, and considering black women have been voting their asses off mm-hmm. in these last couple, at last few elections in Virginia and, and Alabama. And have saved us. And have saved us. Then, you know, I don't know what this is going to be. I think it's going to be, it might be Barack Obama all over again. You know, there's going to be a blue wave. So I don't know if it's going to be Black Panther, but it's going to be something. <laughs> But, uh, anyway. This is a great show. I'm just telling you, you guys got to watch Black Panther if you haven't seen it. You got to see it another couple times. I know we're going to see it. But um, make sure you catch the Zod Andrea podcast on ZodAndrea.com as well as at ZodAndrea on everything. Instagram, Snapchat, um, wherever you can find us. And also, too, keep an eye out then for our upcoming episode regarding DACA. Uh, yeah, we're going to be looking for a lot of some DACA people. We're going to be contacting some people, so it's going to be a nice uh, episode. And also, episode number 100 will be coming soon. We haven't even prepared for it, but we're hoping that it's going to be something really huge. So uh, stay tuned for that. Chris, you got anything you want to say, man? Uh, it was fun, and y'all have a great show. Hey, ah, man, thanks, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate <laughs> it.
appreciate that. And we hope to uh, catch you on Twitch because uh, you got me. I think I'm about to download that joint. And just to see, we're going to make a Zyde and Dre a Twitch account for no reason at all. It's going to have like zero followers and we're not going to care. You know? <laughs> all right, people. We're going to talk Bye. to you later. <laughs>